Hello, lovely listener. How's your day today? You feeling good? Did you wake up a little groggy? Did you have a good cup of coffee or some tea? Did it make you feel better? I hope so. And I hope you're feeling even a little more better right now listening to this radio show. Personalizing it. Nice. Of course. That's what I'm doing from now on. (laughs) I'm pretending from now on as if I'm doing the show for one person. Matt Reeves. How you doing, Matt? <laughs> Weird, weirdest podcast ever. Dedicated to one person, Matt Reeves. By the way, perfect name for that. Speaking of uh, personalizing things, I want to do a quick shout out uh, to our wonderful sponsor today, BetterHelp. Woo. We've partnered up with them. We'll be doing the main uh, – uh, we'll talk a little bit more about it later on in the show. However, if, uh, if you go to betterhelp.com slash WeSam, boom, 10% off your first month. Isn't that incredible? It's incredible. Also incredible, Guayaki, helping preserve the rainforest. Now, if ever, you want to help the Amazon, buy Guayaki. Seriously. It's a company that helps preserve the Amazon rainforest. And as you know, it's burning. It's burning quicker. You know what I wish? I'll say this. I don't care if it's controversial. I don't care. I wish people cared more about the Amazon burning than a church catching on fire. Notre yeah. Dame. Sorry. Not sorry. <laughs> Did you see how much money they raised so quickly for that old church? By the way, I get it. Cool church. They don't need more money. Surprise. <laughs> the Amazon, however, Earth's lungs, literally Earth's lungs. Nobody cares. Eh, we deserve an apocalypse. This is hell world, yeah. We deserve an apocalypse. Oh, man, I'm worked up already. <laughs> I am worked up already. Uh, real quick, also as well, Patreon supporters, we got some new ones. Thank you so much. Seriously, special shout out to you. Send me a message. Tell me that you like the Patreon videos because you're getting a little extra when you si- sign up on Patreon. Is that right, Michael? Yes, it is. Peyton, isn't that right? That's so right. You get little extra videos that no one else sees. Only you. Because you give a little extra, boom, we give you a lot extra. That's how we make love to you. (laughs) Matt Reeves. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) This is the best fucking radio show ever. (laughs) Anyway. Who's our guest? Uh, Not sure. No, I'm kidding. It's uh, – our guest today, Matt Reeves, is (laughs) Jason Inman. Jason Inman, I've known him since college. Really? Oh, yeah. That's cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. We used to shoot videos together. Funny videos. Uh, we used to play in plays. Play in plays. That's a word. And he's also the author of a new book called Super Soldiers, a salute to the comic book heroes and villains who fought for their country. He also holds, holds, hosts, and he holds it. He holds if, court. He, 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 in a way. In a way. He holds a very popular podcast called Geek History Lesson. And so we're going to talk about that, talk about the book, talk about comic book heroes, comics, also about Popeye's chicken sandwich. What's going on with that craze? Nice. And you've got some current events. Peyton, it looks good. I shot a video with him over the week. It's gone through the roof in Mexico. Boom! We made it in Mexico, baby. Prime time in Mexico. How do we say prime time in, in, in Spanish? I don't speak Spanish. Well, I know. can you Google I'm it? Terrible. Terrible Hispanic. <sighs> I want to know how to say prime time in Spanish before we go into it. Because Prim, prima Timo? Primo Timo! I don't think that's it. Oh, son of a <laughs> bitch, Michael. You can't let me say that right on air, Bo. Bo? Bo? Baby? <laughs> don't forget Alexa. I know. I know. Hora estelar. Estelar. Hola. Hora estel, es estelar. Este lar. Maxima, maxima audience. What? Yes, I have. Maxima, man, you know what? I'm sorry to our <laughs> Spanish speaking listeners. One Tweet at me. Minutes. Let me know the proper way to say prime time in Spanish because we're popular in Spanish because of the YouTube video. And finally, if you have an Alexa, remember, all you got to do is, hey, Alexa, play Adobe Radio. Boom. We Sam's World. 3 p.m. Thursdays. <laughs> what? what? <sighs> Please welcome. 
my friend, Jason Inman. I'm signing the book. Yep, to you. <laughs> to we, Sam, with love. With, with beautiful eyes. And beautiful, beautiful eyes. eyes. You have beautiful I do. eyes. Yeah. I do. <laughs> <laughs> this is not our second time doing this. <laughs> Jason Inman. And all I need you to do is. Well, let's see, I'm going initial initial. Tw- to initial twice now. So, uh, <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. There's Dude. a double initial, so it's that's a unique copy of a book, my own book that I did not sign. That's amazing. To we, Sam. <laughs> well, like I was saying, the perfect yep. start. To mm-hmm. our uh, a ridiculous start to uh, our uh, origins because uh, we had uh, done a lot of funny and and ridiculous videos in college together. You were the only one willing to do some of my stupid ideas, and then you brought me stupid ideas, and I was like, "Let's film them." You know what? One was yeah. the stupidest one. The um, not not, uh, not uh, I looked like a mime, but I was the robot or. Um, Oh, oh, do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. I look like a puppeteer. Yes. Uh, so, or a, mu- a puppet. Okay. That was for, we did the 24 hour film race in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yes. And we came up with the, cause they, they would give you a theme. God, mm-hmm. what was that called? It was called Mr. Something, Mr. Like Monday or, and you were, you were like a, a mm. robot who people could, for lonely people is yes. what it was. Yes. Yeah. And we made you look like a, a mime, mm-hmm. but yeah, you were like, walk like this and right. But you were terrible at being a companion. Was the joke? I think was the entire joke is that you, the people would, the people were lonely. Yeah. They would buy you, and you were just really bad at being a companion. I yeah, can't remember the joke. Oh, and I would, I would, I stabbed Sean Stewart or choked him. Yes. at the end of the thing, you choked him out when his. It dad was an died. infomercial. Yes. kind of thing. It was, a, it was an all infomercial. Like buy this product, and you kept turning around in the same space, <laughs> so it just looked like you were doing a circle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was the idea that I was the scientist that built you. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was the joke that every shot you cut to me, I was always like, hello. But it was <laughs> the same room. <laughs> right, 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 right. I just remember uh, how much of a process it was to like film and the time it took to edit and upload. Mm-hmm. And like fast forward now 10 years plus. Yeah, 10 how, years plus. How much quicker it is now to yeah. film, edit, and upload. You want to know the craziest thing about that? We shot on videotapes. Now, they, like not true videotapes, but like there are these things called mini DVs. Yeah. And they were high def, but they were tapes. Now you're just memory cards, man. It's insane. Wait, you had you had to like, oh my gosh, this takes me back now. <laughs> I feel kind of old, but not really. Uh, we're all old. Get with it, man. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but you have beautiful old eyes. I do. I just want to say. Thank you. You know my favorite part? I I... I just, you know, I hope you're not sponsored by them, but I hate Facebook. Oh, okay. My favorite part of Facebook now, mm-hmm. and I only keep it because I have family, is to go to the memories tab and oh, look yeah. at, like, what I did. And a lot of times recently it's been, like, some weird picture from the weird videos we used to film. Oh, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or uh, be like, oh, yeah, we were filming Brokeback Mime, or oh, you were filming Uncle Stewart. Or, by the way, Uncle Stewart is all on YouTube. I'm telling you, that was one of my favorite things to film ever. Yeah. It was, like, my – humor and the mm-hmm. type of stories we want to tell. It was actually like, I rewatched it a while ago <laughs> and I was like, there's actually some substance to this. There's yeah. a lot of fat on it, but like there's, it's a story. Yeah. We should, uh, we should set the table for all our listeners who are like, what the hell is young uncle Stewart? Um, so my senior thesis project, mm-hmm. I was, uh, in the film department at university of Tulsa. They basically let me decide what I wanted to do. And I wanted to make a mockumentary because I thought it would be kind of a challenge because I'd never made something like that. And the office was very big at the time. So I was like, oh, I want to do something like that. And then I think I came to you and was like, what do you think? And, and you told me you had this idea for this mm. clown character that you and was it, is it Joey was his name? Yeah. 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 Uh, Joey you, O'Brien. You, you and Joey O'Brien had this character over this clown mm-hmm. and then we just expanded it. Yeah. Cause it's, I think it's 40 minutes long. It is 40 minutes long. Yeah, and it's all on YouTube. I've actually been waiting for you to get nominated for an Oscar because I was like, I'm gonna, I was going to drop that to Variety oh and gosh. like let it go crazy. I, I, by the way, mm-hmm. I've been expecting um, whenever you make it onto The Tonight Show mm-hmm. or, or something like that, they're going to play like Brokeback Mime or they're going to play Uncle oh, Stewart. I I, so. I've been waiting for it. I'm like, oh, man, that's going to be like. Well, <laughs> that, that was kind of my breakthrough into auditioning. Mm-hmm. In L.A., when I first moved out here, I was like, okay, what are my strengths? Yeah. Mimes. Like mime work. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, cool, we I've got a, a mime. Of, we did a lot of mime stuff. 
way too much mime stuff. Wait, way too many. <laughs> like, did you go to mime school? No, I was. I yeah. Was, there was, I was trained as an actor. It, it's, it's weird also that our base idea was like, hmm, what should we do? Yeah, put Lee Sam in clown makeup. Yeah. So like like old school, you know what I mean? Like, oh, that's an actor. Yeah. Um, that's funny. My first TV gig, yeah. Thousand Ways to Die, on mine. Who chokes on a sandwich who people think he's acting. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's And funny. that's kind of like my breakthrough mm-hmm. into television. Yeah. You just never know what's going to help you. Well, I'm going to say this. You were my favorite mime in our Brokeback Mime. You were. Wow. Of the two. Out of, out of the two. <laughs> Speaking of Pete Brennan, who was the second mime, yeah. uh, we did a shot for shot almost remake of the trailer for Brokeback Mountain mm-hmm. uh, just done in mimes. So you can check that out. And <laughs> Yep. Yep. Uh, he actually got a job at TU just now. He's teaching. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'm not sure. I, I need to ask him because they don't have a theater department anymore. Uh, yeah, I don't quite understand it either. Yeah. Um, I stopped giving them money a long time ago. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so. good on you because yep. I never did. <laughs> <laughs> they always ask me. Oh, no, I, like, I never gave them money ever. Oh, you beginning. never? Oh, but, okay. But now I, ref- I, I refuse to even answer any of their emails or letters or anything like that. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. It kind of went downhill. Yeah. Yeah. Quickly. Oh, oh man, there it is. Oh. There it is. Yeah. That's Brokeback Mime. Yeah. That. I don't know. Oh, wow. YouTube kept the sound. <laughs> um, by the way, everyone might laugh at this. We won an award for this. Yeah. We won an award for cinematography? for best cinematography for yeah. this for this for this thing. <laughs> um, in a film festival. It's shot yeah. so well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jason. Yep. yep. Most of it's handheld, too. <laughs> so stupid. Yeah, I so don't stupid. actually clap. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, if you go watch the real Brokeback Mountain trailer, it is literally shot for shot, the trailer. <laughs> Dude, good times. Yep. What's that? You said that was Pete Brennan? Yeah, you know Pete? Yeah. What? Wow, how do yeah. you know Pete? I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Whoa! <laughs> Wait, how do you know Pete? I know Pete, Theater Tulsa. Oh, oh wow. wow. Great. I did uh, The Crucible for Theater Tulsa. Oh. You did? Yeah, I was nice. uh, John Proctor. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Only because I had long hair. You'd be a good John Proctor. Yeah, yeah. I was just angry. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, uh, our old, uh, our old um, theater instructor, Dr. Cook, uh, old man, looked like Santa Claus. He came and saw that production. Yeah. And I'll never forget, I, I, I saw him after the play, and I was like, what did you think? And he was like, hmm, you were angry. That was his only words. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I was like, all right. Wow. I'll take it. He was, uh, he left shortly after we graduated, right? Uh, I think so, yeah. He retired. Yeah. I don't know what he's doing nowadays. I don't know if he would remember me. I don't know if he would remember any of us, but (laughs) I had to say it. I love the man dearly. He's the Um, whole reason I went to that school. Yeah. Yeah, 100%, man. Yeah, yeah. How'd you know him before? Uh, Well, so I actually applied for the University of Tulsa in, uh, this will definitely show my age, in 2004. Um, because Mm. that's when I finished, uh, my first two years of, uh, junior college. Mm. And then what happened is I applied for university Tulsa. I applied for OSU and a couple other places Mm. and I got scholarships at a bunch of different places. I didn't know where to go. Um, but I was leaning towards university of Tulsa and then I got activated to go to Iraq when I was in the army. That's when it happened. So they were like, 2005, you're going to go to Iraq. And I like had to email all these professors and be like, I can't accept your scholarship because I have to go. And I was so worried because I was like, oh, what, what's going to happen? Because I lost all these scholarships. And Dr. Cook was the only one that emailed me back and said, like, don't worry. You tell us when you're coming back. We will hold it for you. Oh, that's awesome. And so that was like, as soon as he said that, I was like, oh. And he emailed me the whole year. Yeah. Like, every once, every, by once a month, he'd be like, hey, how are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm definitely going to that place. So Yeah. 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 The, the, this is something, actually, I was really curious to bring you on the show and talk to you about. And the core of your book, you know, it has to deal with your, you know, your military experience yeah. and, and your service. And I'm, I'm curious to know what was your initial pull to join the military? Ooh. Uh, you know, a lot of it is that, you know, when you're young and you're, especially if you're under 25 and especially if you're a man, um, you kind of get filled that pull to be like, I want to do something that nobody else has ever done or I want to climb that mountain. That's kind of what it was because nobody in my family has ever joined the military. And no, mm-hmm. everybody in my family – like I come from a family of farmers. They're all like you, – you go start the family farm. You do it over here in the middle of nowhere, Kansas, and that's what you do. And then you grow up and you know, you're know you you're, you're poor most of your life and it's hard as hell and it sucks. And that's what you do. So I looked at the military as 
this idea, I really bought into the recruiter's speech of like, oh, you can travel and see the world and you could do uh, a lot of things. And and so I, I signed up when I was 17. Like I like it, it, I looked at it as my golden ticket out of there, uh, but also as like an adventure. And I always looked at it as six years. And I say that in the book a couple of times too. Like I always saw it as six years and six years I was going to be done. And I had have an interesting uh, bit of stories. Um, but you know, mostly my military experience, I would say it's positive. Like I, I had a positive time, although the con was, you know, that I spent an entire year in Iraq in the middle of a combat zone at the, like the height of combat there. Wow. Uh, when I was 21. Um, Jeez. yeah, yeah. I was, that's the thing that like has come on to me now when I'm talking to other people where they're like, oh yeah, when I was 21 and 22 and I was like, oh, I was in the middle of a combat zone when I was yeah. 21. That's insane. Um, and it's interesting that I'm now this far removed because I was there in 2005, so I'm bad with math. So that was 14 years ago. Uh, how much that definitely affected my life, you know, and how different my life would be if I hadn't done if I hadn't done that. Yeah. What was your occupation in the military exactly? I was a combat engineer, which basically are the people. And I chose this because again, I was the young man, and I was like, my they take you take an ASVAB score, which is basically your ACT for the military. Mm. I took that. I scored really well on that. So they wanted me to come into military intelligence. But I looked at it as like, no, that's a paper pusher job. I don't want that. I wanted to do the job that was the most military. And the most military job was either infantry or combat engineer. Infantry was just like, you know, pick up a gun and shoot somebody. Uh, or pick up a weapon, excuse me. Um, combat engineer was there's something in the road, pick up a block of C4, put it on the thing, blow it up. And so to me, blowing stuff up was the most military job you could ever have. Oh. So I know a lot about C4. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, I do. So uh, uh, if you ever need something blown up, uh, I'm available. Okay. Uh, you just have to buy the C4. Well, I don't want to be put on a watch list. Yeah. So <laughs> let's just make that very clear right now. So I will not be I'm already you. on the watch list. So. Oh, yeah? Oh, I probably. No, no. <laughs> uh, question, actually, yeah, sure. about C4. Um, <laughs> how... Is it? Does it need an electrical charge to blow up, or can you hit it hard enough and it'll blow up? No, like, there's okay. no hitting a block of C4. Okay, yeah, I don't know. I don't no, know. No, no, yeah, no. Yeah. That's a complete movie invention. Okay. You, you always need some sort of detonator. Yeah, it, it is an electrical charge. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, what is the actual chemical compound of C4? Like, what is that? That I don't know. Okay. That I don't know, or I've forgotten. Okay. So, yeah. I've just always been curious. Like, We just always had the bricks. We just always had those, like, gray bricks. Yeah. Was yeah. it flammable and then it would explode, or it needs an electrical charge specifically? No, we would always put, like, this little detonator. Um, I think it's, like, called an, an M60, M something like that. Yeah. It was this little tiny detonator. That kinda, it kind of looked like a meat thermometer. Yeah. And you just pop it in there, and then, you know, you'd have a radio controller for it. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. But is it, like, if it caught fire, would it explode? I think so, yes. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Now, I will never encounter C4 in my life, probably, but I just was Well, I think it's a government-controlled substance, so... Really? Yeah, I think so. I don't, oh, th wow. I don't think you can go to a store and buy C4. I'm pretty certain about that. Oh, you know, I, If I, only I, you could, right? Oh, man. Uh, I can listen, you imagine this country if you could buy C4 in Walmart? Uh, mm, we're going to go down a scary road there. Yeah, yeah. You want me to um, sign that book again? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it L1A2 detonator? That's Sure. I don't know. Um, I just, it's a long, it's a long time oh, ago. We're definitely flagged now. If you're Googling, <laughs> like we need C4 oh, no. oh, no. I, Adobe's flagged. Oh, Adobe's flagged. Yeah, yeah that's no. fine. Oh, um, are they? Okay. <laughs> I, I listened to uh, the uh, Jocko uh, podcast. I don't yeah. know if you're familiar with no. it. Um, he's written a couple books that have actually influenced my life in a very positive mm -hmm. way. Uh, better living, more disciplined living, mm -hmm. and applying that to my personal life, my career, and found a lot of positive results. And on his podcast, he brings on these like old school uh, veterans who like served in Nam and yeah, like, SEALs or, or Army Rangers and they talk about like their stories, man. And, you know, some of them talk about C4 or these like, what do they call Toe something, toe, toe biters, toe something. Anyway, like what mm -hmm. they used to use as weapons back in Vietnam on the secret missions. I've always been, I've always been interested in just military in general. Yeah. So, um, so combat engineer. Mm-hmm. You were in the the thick of it. Did you go through basic training, I'm assuming? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then how long before you were sent off? Uh, it was five years. Uh, okay. I, yeah, I got deployed like my fifth year. 
my fifth year I was in. So like the year before. So it was funny when we came back, I had less than six months left. Yeah. And of course they were like, you ready to sign up again? And I'm like, no, <laughs> no. Uh, I remember throwing my M16 at them when I was done. I threw it at them. Whoa. Yeah. I tell that story in the book. Like I was so, because in Iraq you have to carry or any combat zone, you have to carry your weapon around with you at all times. Yeah. So it like becomes a third arm. Yeah. And when we finally got to turn that in, like I threw it at the quartermaster. Wow. I was like, whoa. And I was like, I don't want this thing anymore, man. I wow. just don't want it. Yeah. Yeah. So well, may I ask what was the, yeah. the, the, the feeling of just wanting to get rid of it is just cause it was a, more of an annoyance, a burden, or you were just done fighting or you just wanted to end I, this chapter in your life. I think it was the burden. I think the idea that like you had this thing, I mean, it's a literal abatross, right? Like think hanging on your shoulder mm -hmm. for a year. And it's like that constant reminder of, Oh, this thing is always with me. Um, that was like one of the things and I talk about this in the book quite a bit. One of the things that's so interesting and a lot of people don't realize is that when you come back from a situation like that for that year, you're in this year for so long and you think it's never going to end. Like, and it becomes like this dreamlike state. And there's a certain point where the reality is so absurd yet kiltered that you think this is reality now. Like, there's a certain point where you're just like, all right, this is the rest of my life. Like, this is it. Like, I'll never go back mm -hmm. to the way it was. And then when you actually do, it feels like a, it feels like you're waking up from a dream. So I remember for the six months after that, just driving to one time I, I, I talked about, I was like, I was going to subway because I was like, Oh, I'm hungry. I'm going to go to subway. And I remember having the revelation in the car that like, Oh, I'm driving the subway because I want to not because I was ordered to. And it was all my choice. And I was like, Oh, this is such a weird feeling that I can do what I want. Because that's the other thing you lose when you're in the military, especially in a zone, is that everything you do is an order or a mission. You don't get to choose to leave the base. You don't get to choose to go over here. You don't get to choose when you want to sleep. Like, it is all chosen for you. So the fact to have all that back is suddenly overwhelming. You're just like, whoa, what am I doing? I can actually, like, watch TV now? What? Yeah. Yeah. Do you find any hardship with adjusting? Uh, it took about six months. It took about six months for me. But luckily, um, I this was the semester before I came to TU. So mm -hmm. luckily, I kind of just I, I kind of asked my parents. I was like, "Can I just move back in? Like, is that okay?" Because I didn't have I had to give up my apartment. I had to give up all everything like that. So I was like, "Can I just like chill at your place for like you know three or four months?" And they were like, "Yeah, totally. That's fine." You know. So uh, luckily, I was like got to just hang out and see friends and do stuff like that. I did a couple plays in that time. Uh, just because I was like, oh, okay, you know, whatever, I'll do a play, you know. I did, like, Chicago. Yeah. I did a lot of plays that I hadn't, before Iraq, I wouldn't have done. Because it gives you, I'll tell you the one thing about going through any kind of combat experience, it gives you an amazing confidence. Because you're just like, well, nothing happened over there, so, man, nothing can stop me now. Yeah. Or it's one of those things. So, like, yeah, I tried out for a musical that I would have never done before, and I got cast as, like, Amos. And I was like, oh, this is great, this is fun. So, yeah. yeah, well. You know, when you're in a combat zone yeah. and then they're like, hey, you want to do a play? Yeah, the stakes are mm – -hmm. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to yeah. perform in front of people. I hope you're not nervous. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to be shooting at me, right? But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm fine. <laughs> but yeah, but that's like the – that's like one of the biggest things I, I wanted to do with the book is, is the idea is that I wanted people to have like different perspectives on these fictional characters that we're now seeing in movies, you know, every two months. Thank you, Disney. Um and but also like through these fictional characters sort of get a lens to this is kind of like what the military is or this is what the military can change mm. people like which is I think a perspective that many people don't have which is weird even though I think people know more I think we know more military service members now than we've ever at any other time in our history because um, the you know war on terror has increased the number of veterans in this country to astronomical heights mm. you know. Well, I it was really interesting about the book is I almost saw it as like a a quick like character study with each one of like a core belief yeah. of where they're coming yeah. from because it does influence like you said so mm -hmm. much of where they currently are the superheroes mm -hmm. or where they 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 will have uh, been if that makes any sense yeah um, I think something like the military is a, a, I mean again I'm speaking from a, not having done it is a, it can be a huge impact for someone. Positive or negative, yeah. um, depending on the person, depending mm -hmm. on the circumstances, depending on what they have to do during their service. So um, I kind of enjoyed why, reading it. I actually skipped to the end and read why, like, the honorable mentions. Oh, the <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, Wolverine. Yeah. And I was like, oh, 
Oh shit! Yeah, he yeah, did yeah, mention yeah. Wolverine. So that was I, really yeah, I, I I had to do the honorable mentions chapter because I knew uh, that I had this list of sixteen. I actually orig- the original list was twenty. Yeah, and then I was halfway through writing the book. And um, I was told that they, the publisher wanted the book somewhere between like 50,000 and 60,000 words. They were like, that's the prime spot. And I was like, okay, cool. I can do that. I was halfway through writing the book and I was already, I was at character, I think six. And I was already at 30,000 words. And I was like, uh, ooh, uh, <laughs> I need yeah. to cut some of these characters, uh, which I thought was a good thing of, re- I was worried about hitting that word count or getting to that point. But I found as I was writing it, I, my work counts get it longer and longer and longer. So, yeah, the honorable mention is basically the, to <laughs> shut up the internet when they're like, wait, these characters not in there. And I'm like, okay, relax. Yeah. Also, I was never going to find all of them. Well, you focused also on yeah. American uh, services. Yeah, well, I, had, which I, had I, to del- I had to delineate somewhere. Well, there's so you know? <laughs> many superheroes. And yeah. every, like, there's also fake military institutions and superheroes like all over the place. Like a lot of people oh, have, yeah. have um, gamed me on Bucky, which uh, oh. uh, James Buchanan Barnes. But – and I put it in there. The original reason why he's not in there is in the original comic books, he's not even in the army. He is just the kid that's like, hey, Captain America, let's go. And Captain America's like, come to the war with me. And you're just like, what? <laughs> he's <laughs> you know? a child. Yeah, it, yeah he's literally 16 um, following Captain America into D Day. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. His original, his origin. Um, in the comic books, it makes sense for why he becomes the Winter Soldier because you're like, Cap probably put him in a lot of situations that he should have never been in. Yeah. Uh, but in the movies, they like aged him up and made him a soldier smartly, I think. How do you right. feel about that? Disney uh, taking over and at the world? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, I, but I, but in general, like, <laughs> here here's my opinion about it. <laughs> that was going to be one of my current events, but uh, oh. Disney. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll we'll, we'll talk about it. We can in talk detail. about current events. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll shift <laughs> I'll shift the convo a little bit in terms of. I think for anybody who's a comic book fan, the last, would you say, five, seven years has been kind of the start of the golden era for like TV comic book people? Uh, you know, I would even, I would couch it as maybe even a little bit earlier than that. Oh, okay. I, I kind of think it starts with Arrow. I really do. I think the first okay. season of yeah. Arrow is the start of the golden age because I think without, and we don't get Arrow without Smallville. Smallville for 10 years is the only comic book show on television. Well, the, yeah, then um, do we go back to Smallville? Well, I actually... I think Arrow is the start of it because Arrow creates this universe that are five other shows that are all interconnected and it becomes this thing. Like, and they're mm. all successful shows. And then I think that is what leads to Marvel Netflix. I think that's what leads to The Boys. I think that's what leads to all this other stuff. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I think that is, I think I really do think Arrow created like the, the current comic book golden age, you know, and Marvel, mm. of course, was well into its. I mean, Avengers 1 came out the year after Arrow premiered, I believe. Um, so, like, when Avengers hit okay. and Arrow hits in that same year. So it's 2011, 2012, I think, is, like, that's the start. Arrow of it. is 2012. Yeah. October 2012, and I think uh, the Avengers came out summer. Yeah. So that is, I, think wow. it's, I think it's definitely 2012. It's like that's, that's when it fair. exploded. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. I also think the opportunity, not only for actors in general, there's just more work than ever. Yeah. And, and writers, there's more work than ever. Uh, but also the fact that now uh, audience members can enjoy these um, – these uh, what's the word I'm looking for? These characters that weren't so prominent, you know, like like side characters or side – All right, I'm going to ask you. Yeah. Have you seen Doom Patrol? Doom Patrol? Yeah. No. OK. Do you even know who Doom the Doom Patrol are? No. OK. So the Doom Patrol is this DC Comics character. It's only on their streaming service, DC Universe. Bar none, it is the best comic book show, if not one of the best television shows I have watched this year. Ooh. And it's a show about these C-list characters. Like, they're, the Doom Patrol have only had maybe one successful comic book run in their entire history. They were created, like, in the 60s. Yeah. Um, and the run was written by Grant Morrison, and it was, like, in the late 80s, early 90s. They've tried to come back a couple of times. They even came back very recently, like three years ago. I think the comic was canceled before it even reached issue 20. But on the show, the writers and the actors kind of take advantage of that. You know, the audiences don't really know these characters, but the, the, what's the one thing we know about these characters? They're really weird. Mm. Like it stars a man who's a robot who the only human part of him is his brain. His, he was in a terrible car accident. Oh. His brain was put in this robot. He's literally called Robot Man. <laughs> and he is a, a, a drinking, loud <clears throat> NASCAR driver. 
Okay. And so his biggest thing is like when he counters these superhero situations is just to go like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, and it actually becomes funny. It's like his catchphrase is what the fuck. He's played by Brendan Fraser. <laughs> oh, um, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This show, Doom Patrol. Yeah, there it is. That's Robot Man. And then beside him is Rita, who is Elastigirl, who is this 1940s golden age starlet who like walked into a jungle and she got stretchy powers. <laughs> um, but like the show, the, the show train changes it to um, her character arc is it's not that she has stretchy powers. It's that she can't control the shape of her body. So unless she's like utterly focused and controlled, she turns into a blob. Oh, and she's very concerned about her looks. Oh. So, I mean, it, again, it's... That's actually very well written, like, yeah. in terms of character. Yeah, so they took advantage that nobody knows these characters and that these characters are weird, and I think infused it into this amazing television show. So, yeah. but uh, Doom Patrol, yeah. I don't know how we even got started on that. Weird tele- comic book television shows, there you yeah. go. Yeah, this is the show. We yeah. go off on the most insane Yeah, tensions. yeah, there you go. Um, I just love how... <laughs> How much passion you have for comic books and stuff, and you actually mention it in the book. Yeah, that your your time in Iraq. Sometimes you'd have these long stints of doing nothing, correct? Or yeah. Or just off time. Well, the problem, the, the big thing about combat zones is that what the biggest enemy is boredom, and the reason why is because you'll either get a mission where you're sent out to the middle of nowhere, mm. or you'll be stuck on base and you're just doing like regular guard duty, like you're just doing like you know go out do the convoy, come back in, and that's your day. Yeah. Um, and when you're on base back then. Um, it was hard to get at the internet. You had to go to the internet cafes to get on the internet and stuff like that. You couldn't really. So yeah, you're just kind of just sitting around looking at a wall or sitting around looking at a tent. And so if you have stuff to read, you can kill the boredom. And that, that's where, yeah, that's where I really got back into comic books. Yeah. Yeah. It was during that time. We got three minutes. Um, that's, uh, yeah. And then you had asked your, your parents to ship you a bunch Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got a care package, um, which is f- sent over. And in the care package, was, there were two comic books. There was like a Superman comic book, and there was this comic book called Ultimate X Men. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know about the Ultimate Marvel Universe, it was this reboot that was done in the 2000s where Marvel was like, let's reboot all the Marvel characters as if they were created in the year 2000. Oh. And so it led to this thing where Spider Man is 16. He's no longer a photographer, he's a web designer. Um, Wolverine has a soul patch. Why? Because it's 2000. Um, but that's that, what can we do to make him 2000? <laughs> it's soul patch. Soul patch. Um, but the issue I got sent of Ultimate X Men was this idea that Nightcrawler was this like assassin. Like he had been scooped up by this government program and trained to be the perfect assassin. When you think about Nightcrawler's teleportation powers, you're like, oh, that makes sense. And I remember reading that being like, this is not the Nightcrawler I remember. What the hell is mm. this? And that it got me like hooked into it. And I was yeah. like, can you find these? Can you send them over to me? Yeah. And that's, yeah, it reinvigorated much. But I mean, I've always had the love for comic books because I honestly think that comic books are, there's two American mythologies. It's the Western and comic books. And mm. the Western is not really ours. Like, um, there's lots of countries with the West. Um, Italy loves the old West. There's something like that. So I don't really quite think that we can claim the West as all of ours, but superheroes are American. Superman was created in 1938 by two Americans. Mm -hmm. And before then, yeah, we had the spirit. Yeah, we had Zorro, but they weren't really the, I'm wearing a cape, I'm wearing tights, and I'm going to save the cat in the tree. They were not that character. They were like these evil, they were really mean. And Superman creates this whole giant mythology mm. of um, – and, I, and, I, and it's truly American. It really is – like Superman is American to a T. And if you look at most superheroes, they sort of all follow Superman's idea. But that's, that's the thing that's so passionate to me because to me, it's that mythology that reaches all the way back to cave drawings. Mm. You know, and, and again, it's one of the only things that we have that's uniquely American. That is so well put. I never yeah. even thought about it that way. Yeah. We got to take a quick break. No and worries. And then uh, we'll be back and we'll talk some more. Do you guys suffer from anxiety, depression, relationship issues, anxiety, uh, self esteem issues? Did I mention anxiety? Yes, you did. Okay, good. We Sam's World has partnered with BetterHelp to provide you with professional counseling, making it accessible, affordable, convenient, so that anyone who struggles with life challenges can get help anytime. 
anywhere, even on your tablet or smartphone or your computer. This is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. So after you sign up, they will match you to an available counselor who fits your objectives, preferences, and the types of issues that you are dealing with. Different counselors have different approaches and areas of focus. So it's important that they find the right person who can achieve the best results for you. For you. It, it's catered for your specific problems, which I think is amazing. It's amazing. Uh, if you start the process and you feel that your counselor isn't a good fit for you, you know what they do? You can switch. Boom. Done. You can switch counselors. Immediately. There's literally no excuse to do this. A better help offers access to licensed, trained, experienced, and accredited professionals. So you're not going to get Joe Schmo off the streets who's doing tarot cards or aura readings. These are real professionals who have trained in their field, have had real life experience, and are licensed by professional board members, which is, I think is super important nowadays. Absolutely. You can start communicating with these counselors, therapists, psychologists in under 24 hours, and there is a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's counselor network, which is sometimes not locally available in many areas, especially if you're like in a small town, right? Oh, absolutely. And if you're in a small town, usually that, those prices go way up. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor, and you can get counseling in four ways. You can exchange messages, you can chat live, you can speak over the phone, and you can even do video conferencing. It's incredible. It's more affordable, like I said, than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. And guess what? We just made it even more financially viable for you. All you have to do is go to betterhelp.com, that's H-E-L-P, slash we Sam, and you get 10% off your first month. Boom. That's betterhelp.com slash 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 we Sam. Betterhelp.com slash we Sam. 10% off your first month. You get the help you need. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today, and so does We Sam's world. Okay. <laughs> we're, we, we were just in break, and my yep. mind was a little bit blown and shaken up a little bit. Yeah. Um, you guys were talking about a, a superhero that Peyton knows or yeah. an actor who played a superhero on Doom's, uh, Doom Patrol. The Beard Hunter. The Beard Hunter. Is it Tommy Snyder? Tommy Snyder. Tommy, Tommy Snyder. Snyder. He was great in the show. He was great performance. What is, what, yeah. so, what is the superpower of <laughs> this man? He's called the Beard Hunter. Okay. So if he eats a piece of your beard, he can track you anywhere in the world. <laughs> now, I know that sounds... Stupid, dude, and insane. You're fired. <laughs> Is that your idea? The person yeah, the network exec. Yeah. Or that, that's what you came into the room with. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> Show canceled. Yeah. But there's I'm a whole kidding. there's a whole episode where they fight him. There's Shut a whole up. episode. No, I'm what? not. Yes. <laughs> oh wait, no, 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 no. I'm taking off my headphones. A whole episode on this? It's yeah. a whole episode. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. It, okay. Because <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. you got to know. It's really good. I, I haven't seen the show. Sure. And you got to admit that it's kind of weird here. Like you're pitching yep. me a show. Like this guy. Okay. Okay. All right. If here he, we go. I find, if he All eats right. your beard, here Jason, he'll find you and kill you. Yep. All right. If he eats your beard, studio exec, if he eats your beard, he can track you anywhere in the world. But he also <laughs> learns your deepest secrets and your deepest fears. So he doesn't even have to fight you. He can just throw up your past at you, your fears, like tell you about the worst thing, the deepest secret that you've been hiding from everybody else. Oh. And suddenly you don't want to fight him. And he can just walk right past you. Okay. That's the episode. Oh. And he beats the Doom Patrol. I'm sorry. I can't. He beats. He literally beats them all. <laughs> I'm not sold on this. <laughs> I can't lie to you. I was going to be like, I can't. I can't. Well, fine, Disney. I'm going to sell it to DC. Uh, you know what? Fair. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm actually. Go make your lady in the tramp. <laughs> <laughs> Live action, Lion King. Um, Man, I, you're just all on my, the, the current events that I had this really? week. Really? <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm. You know what? I might have to watch th this one episode. I'm telling you, man, it's awesome. And live stream my reaction. <laughs> you to should it. do it. You should do it. And you shouldn't watch any of the other episodes. Just no, go no, in blind. No, no, no. That's blind. what I love yep. doing. So, uh, with some of our guests, um, yeah. sometimes that I don't like to do research for certain people. Yeah. And I'm just like, 
I'll just go in blind. All right. I think it's, I think it works better sometimes, especially yeah. if you have a curious nature. Yeah. That's kind of interesting. That you know what? That could be the mark of a good TV show. If mm-hmm. you go in blind to a random episode and be like, "What is this show?" I don't know. I would. I don't know. That's hard because especially in the world, we're so serialized now. Yeah. That I would say you're gonna have a hard time tracking that storyline. Yeah. In the Beard Hunter episode, because I think it's episode eight of fifteen. And the Beard Hunters, like, whole deal directly relates to the season arc. Mm. Um, but I don't know. Like, it depends. Like, I, I think yeah. – I keep punching my mic. That's it's good. all good. I, I kind of think the perfect match is – there's there are some television shows, and very few can do this, where they're serialized and they're episodic, where, like, yeah. you can drop into it, but – um, you know, there's sort of a track. Like, Person of Interest, I thought, did that very well. I mm. thought D Space Nine, Star Trek D Space Nine did that very well. Um, but they're few and far between. Like, now we're so, we're so serialized. And I kind of think we're so serialized to the point that detracts from the show sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I had an experience with that with Game of Thrones season one. Yeah. And what happened was, I don't know what happened. I pressed the wrong button. It just skipped to whatever. I thought the first episode was the last episode of season one. Whoa. Oh. So I'm in I'm watching this and I'm engaged right I'm like, yeah. whoa, this is I don't even know what the okay. Whoa, they really throw all this shit at you. Episode Talk about starting one. at the last moment. Yeah, when the guy gets his head cut <laughs> off, I was like, Oh bummer. Do you know what I mean? And so I'm like, okay, whatever. I'll yep. and then I went to episode two and I was like, Oh, wait a minute, he's a lot okay. Oh, they do a, like a jump back kind of thing. That's cool. <laughs> wow. My episode yeah. two, I was actually episode one. That's crazy, man. And so, I I start going through the season. So you lost the arc of uh, the the of the Ned. Dying. Yeah. Oh, but I yeah. thought it was cool because I'm like, damn it, I'm really mm-hmm. engaged. I'm really like connected to this character. Shit. But that's okay. This is amazing writing because season one of Game of Thrones was really good. In my no, opinion. it's great. It's great. Oh, it's, it's, yeah, um, yeah. But then I get to what I what I think is the. The the mm-hmm. the last episode, I'm like, this looks familiar, <laughs> and I'm like, no, oh no, uh, <laughs> oh no, yeah, man, I've done that before. Actually, it's funny fact. I uh, I did that on Doom Patrol. Oh, I actually uh, skipped an episode. I think I skipped like episode ten accidentally, like in the queue. Like it went <laughs> it went from episode nine right to eleven. But I figured it out in the first five minutes because I was like, wait a minute, what? And I thought I was like, oh, are they doing an out of order thing? Like yeah. they suddenly jump time, and then I was like, no, they can't. They wouldn't have done that. I was like, I get, something's wrong. Like, something's wrong. Yeah. So. Uh, you host, as well, a very popular podcast, Geek mm-hmm. History Lesson. Mm-hmm. You've been doing it for five years, you just told me. Yeah, we. Uh, I think we're close to hitting episode 275. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, is it a weekly thing? Is yeah, it- it's a weekly It's a weekly podcast where uh, it's, very, again, very similar to the book. I, I, have, I have a very a very narrow brand, we Sam. Yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. I like to teach people about nerdy things. I like to educate people about nerdy oh, things. Great. So Geek History Lesson is exactly what it sounds. It's like we pick – a topic or a character in pop culture, sometimes video games, sometimes novels. Uh, we go all over the place. And in that hour, we either have a discussion about them or we give you a lesson, like everything you need to know. Like we tell you, you know, here's the 10 cent origin is the way we call it. like very brief cliff notes. Then we go deep. Then we have a discussion about them. And then we always give you recommended reading. We're like, this is the stuff you should check out if you're interested in this character. So, Ooh. and it's very much a podcast. You don't have to listen to every episode and we don't expect everybody to listen to every episode, but go down our list of 270, find the characters or subjects you're interested in, listen to those. And if you like them, then go through the whole thing. Yeah. But we also, um, there are a lot of fictional characters that uh, pop up. Uh, and a lot of times we play act as these characters and, yeah. and it has come to recurring bits. Mm. Uh, like it, we have now turned this, uh, it's like he's our most popular character now. Doctor Strange has become our most popular character because in the Doctor Strange episode, I introduced this idea that what if he is a pompous radio call-in host <laughs> who doesn't really understand magic, very much like Frasier. I steal from the best, like, <laughs> like we all do. Um, and so it has become this recurring gag for Doctor Strange to call in to our show and try to <laughs> have his own show in the middle of our episodes. So even if it, like if anything magic related happens yeah. in in the lesson, like we're talking about a character that's from DC or whatever, like Doctor, there's a chance that Doctor Strange will come in, and now people expect it. So that's awesome. Um, yeah. So it's like we have we have fun with it that way too. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Side note. Yeah. Doctor Strange, I enjoyed that movie a lot. You know, fun fact. Everybody, I find a lot of people don't like it. It's one of my favorite Marvel movies. Yeah. 
I really enjoy. I'm actually very excited for that sequel. Oh, there's a sequel. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. great. I will I will go see that. I yeah. what I really enjoyed was the like esoteric mm-hmm. uh knowledge and all the, like that kind of stuff cuz that 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 stuff I I'm really interested in and how he learns uh all this magic and like the people who were like the guy he le- like learns to go to the Himalayan person. I forget, I'm horrible Karmataj. at names. Yeah. I love that name. Sorry, and he's like I'm not really I didn't really solve my paralysis. I just learned how to do magic. To do yeah. Yeah. And you know, like, oh. You know what I think about, and I would say to anybody that doesn't really jive that movie, go watch it again. I think that movie has one of the most complete character arcs of any Marvel movie because modern Marvel has this tendency to not finish their character arcs because they're always like, we're going to the next movie. And they just let the character arcs don't fit. They'll do step one of the character arc. Step two, they'll hardly ever do step three and give the character resolution because they're always setting them up for the sequel. Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange's final scene is him looking out a window and his hand is shaking. And then it just goes credits. Or get a cityscape shot and then it goes credits. And for a Marvel movie, usually Marvel movies end with, here's the sequel, here's Avengers 5. That movie ends with this guy shaking his hand. So, yeah, you learn that his character, he spent the entire movie being like, I got to fix my hands. I got to fix my hands. I'm very material. I'm very material. Fix my hands. Fix my hands. Fix my hands. And then he goes on this spiritual journey. And at the end of the movie, he learns like, oh, I don't need to fix my hands because I'm a better person now. And this doesn't matter. The physical doesn't matter matter and i'm like mm. that is genius and and this is a marvel a disney giant blockbuster and they end on this shot of excellent a message. man's hand shaking excellent yeah. message yeah, yeah. I, I love that when yeah. you, you can entertain and actually have this like this like gem of wisdom yeah right at man the end where you can actually apply to your own life yeah um so true on the character arc because he starts up up here mm-hmm. bottom of the barrel and then the spiraling upwards yeah trying to well to, his, to me like I, I like i noticed that on uh, because the when i was rewatching, watching there's that scene where he's so concerned with his watches and he's so concerned with his watches and his cufflinks and his hands and i was like oh that's the arc of the movie because they they because i remember the first time i watched it, i was like why are we spending so many time so much time on this watch why is this mm. watch so important yeah. and then it was like oh because we're getting to that shot of oh the watch doesn't matter our, our movies just ruin for you sometimes. Like you can't yeah. sit down and enjoy. Okay, I, I'm not 100%. the only one. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I start. I started uh, watching. <laughs> hey, uh, bad movie night. We're doing a whole episode where we're gonna bring in Jonte and Isaiah, and we're just gonna watch a, re- a bad movie. I watched Fast I have and Furious. Plenty of those. Oh yeah, this one's not as bad as some of the other <laughs> ones, but uh, I started watching Too Fast, Too Furious. <laughs> Oh God! Oh my gosh! It's so cr- yep. it's so cringe. Yeah, it's and I get it. It was aimed at a specific audience at a specific, a very specific time in the two thousands, I believe. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably two thousand two. Yeah, two thousand three ish, oh, yeah. somewhere Dude. in there. And the outfits. Yeah. Oh. You know, but I'm gonna oh. I'm gonna say this. There's nothing wrong with that type of movie. My problem is is that when that type of movie doesn't know that it's that type of movie. Fair. And the argument I would make is Pacific Rim. I love the first Pacific Rim. <clears throat> I hate the second Pacific Rim. Okay, I haven't seen them. Well, because the first Pacific Rim, it's it's giant mechanized robots finding monsters, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Stupid. Yeah. But the first Pacific Rim knows that it's a giant robot fighting monsters and so it's just like okay cool uh well the robot has a giant flaming sword and you're like how do they get the fi- giant flaming sword you're like i don't care uh because mm. it does and and it just like we're gonna show it chopping off the head and then you know idris elba gives this speech about like we're gonna cancel the apocalypse and you're like what does that mean <laughs> but it's a cool line so i'm going with it like they yeah. lean into it whereas the second movie tries to do this story where like these kids have nothing else in their life but fighting monsters with robots. And you need to understand that. And you're like, no, 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 no. You're a movie about robots yeah. fighting monsters. I don't need this intense, like, w- will these children find purpose in their lives? I don't right. want that movie in Pacific Rim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so. I, I, I see those movies as well as finding, like, <laughs> paralleling it to finding, like, old embarrassing photos of yourself as, like, 14 or 15. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, that's what I thought was yeah. cool to wear. Yeah. It's, it, oh, man, I love that kind of stuff. By the way, I want to ask you, I've been wanting to ask you this question because uh, this is a, a memory I talked about 
Facebook. Speaking, uh -oh. speaking of podcast arcs, okay. very early I talked about Facebook memories. Yeah. Uh, and one of the Facebook memories that popped up recently was a picture of you and me from 2007-ish, somewhere in there, when we were doing Hamlet. Yeah. And there is a picture of you and me, because you were Hamlet and I was Claudius, and we are scowling at each other. Like, we were just like, like yeah. scowling. It's just a funny picture of that. So my question to you is, is, again, I can't have this conversation with many people in L.A., um, is it surprising or weird to you that we are the only – I think we're the only two people from anybody that we knew in our department that are out here and actually doing this type of thing? Like I want to ask you your opinion on this. Is it surprising? Yeah. Or shocking or weird. Or is it weird that we're here, what, four, 11 years later? Yeah, it's been 10 years for me. 10 years. 10 years on August 1st, 10 years. Because mm -hmm. uh, I graduated in 2009. Yeah. So I don't know if surprising is the right word. Here's the thing. Moving anywhere out of your comfort zone, mm -hmm. out of your comfort city is difficult. Oh, period. Yeah. It's a life change. And it's, it's scary and literally all your instincts are telling you not to do it because it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. Now surviving – in a competitive city like Los Angeles is extremely difficult. And when I say surviving, I mean just finding a job and yep. making ends meet, period. Then if you're trying to compete in one of the most competitive industries, the entertainment industry in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. is it's so overwhelming. It's good to go into it sometimes not knowing how overwhelming it is. Otherwise, it might scare you out of it. Out of it. Yeah. So – I don't know, man. Uh, I always saw you as someone who was tenacious and stuff. So for you, I wasn't surprised that you stayed here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think who else was in our class. I, that's <laughs> Have you forgotten? Real, that's the real answer. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, no. Um, we had no. we had a couple people move out here, but for financial reasons, they had to move somewhere else. Yeah, and I get that. Yeah, and I don't know. I don't know if it's a conversation of is it strictly finance? Is it strictly they didn't want it bad enough. I don't know. I don't know those answers. It's just, you know, it's just one of those weird things. Again, like it popped up into my yeah. feed the other day and I was like, oh, yeah, that's interesting. And I, I knew I was yeah. coming to do this podcast yeah. and I was like, oh, that's interesting. Do you know what would have surprised me? Yeah. If more people had made it and stayed. Interesting. Interesting. Because I would have been like, well, maybe it's not that hard. <laughs> all right yeah is that fair steve can do it all right yeah i yeah, know <laughs> well i mean the more people who are doing it yeah. come on if like yeah, everybody yeah. for ev if yeah. everybody from our class <laughs> i love it everybody i'm looking right into the camera <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah man. no yeah. it's just yeah it's just, you know it, it's it's nice to reflect on because you just never know where your path leads you and when you will intersect again with certain people. It, it just – life is very interesting like that. Um, yeah, man. It's – Is this the most uh, introspective and modeling We Sam's World you've ever had? I just want to know. No? No. Oh, we can – No. But damn, we should have gone darker. No, All let's right. go darker. All right, cool. Well, do you have how, anything in speci uh, specific? I mean how do you like your bedroom when the lights are out? Oh, We're dude. going darker. Oh, dude. That is very dark. <laughs> Actually, my room's pretty well lit. Oh damn! I'm, I'm actually like all that. right. Natural light. Oh, just, I actually don't have a light. I have one out. light. You have in my no room. light in your bedroom. Uh, I have one salt lamp in my bedroom, and that's it. And I use my bathroom light to mm -hmm. kind of illuminate my room in the in the evening. Okay, that's it. You're one of those guys. I'm one of those guys because I get so much <laughs> natural light, right. and my room doesn't have a yeah. fucking light fixture. Yeah. So I'm like, well, yeah. I'm not deal. I'm not buying a lamp. <laughs> I'm not buying a light fixture. Yeah. Don't need it. Yeah. Thanks, Disney. I'm not buying a lamp. <laughs> <laughs> Disney. Oh my goodness. Um, you know what? No. I mean, are you surprised where your life has taken you? Oh, hundred percent, man. I uh, every every I feel like every turn of my life has been like. Well, I'm not really that surprised, but every turn of my life, I'm very much a operate on a leaf on the wind kind of. Mm. You know, like if the universe is telling me something, I'll do it. Like that's the whole reason why I hosted DCL Access for four years. I, I never wanted to be an online YouTube host, uh, but I found out about that audition and I, I applied for it and they hired me and I was like, okay, cool. And then I started doing it. I was like, this is a fun job. I knew I, that wasn't going to be it forever, but that has afforded me a lot of opportunities that like allowed me to meet a lot of people and do a lot of different stuff. So, um, 
Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, weirdly, there's been a recent development that has kind of maybe been like, oh, maybe this is sort of like faded. Like I was supposed to take all these steps to get to this point, to meet the right people, to be over here. So, yeah. you know, um, but no, yeah, I'm not that surprised. I'm not that surprised about you and me, uh, to be honest with you. Oh, uh, okay. I'm, I'm not that surprised about you and me. And um, I think you are right. There are some other people I would have been like, oh, really? Okay. You know. I did have a very out of body experience. I was on set this week. Uh, NCIS LA was kind enough to bring my character back as a recurring. Oh. So I wrapped up this week and there was a moment I was on stage, stage. I was on the stages uh, behind, you know, like just waiting yeah. for them to finish the uh, setup. The setup. Or whatever. Yeah. And I was just like, this feels so normal for me right now. Mm -hmm. As opposed to 10 years ago when I first moved out to LA. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, yeah, if I would have go gone back in time and be like, hey, in 10 years, you would have done all this. And then at this exact moment, you're going to be back on NCIS LA for your second episode. And it's going to seem totally normal. It's not going to seem uncomfortable or nervous or anything. And you're going to feel right at home. Mm -hmm. and, and I was just like, whoa, that's crazy. And like how some – then I began going, man, how some people will work and work and work and work at this this career path – and never get to experience this. I have a, a story that relates to that. Um, the first comic book I ever read was Death of Superman. And I bought it in a gas station in the middle of nowhere, Kansas. And it yeah. was the first time that I ever realized that – because Wonder Woman and Batman showed up to Superman's funeral. And I was like, well, they're in the – that's all the same story? What? Yeah. I thought Superman was alone. I thought these people were all alone. Yeah. And it made me search out the universe. And that story is mainly written by a whole bunch of people and drawn by a whole bunch of people. But the, the issue where he actually dies – and this, the showrunner of that storyline is this man named Dan Jurgens, mm -hmm. who's a legend in the comic book industry. Uh, he created the character Doomsday. It was in Batman v Superman. Like he is just a legendary character. And through uh, my work and all this stuff like that, um, I've become friends with Dan Jurgens. Like he has a, he gave me a quote for my book, um, and he shared the book online. And like we talk regularly. And if you, if I would have gone, if I go back to 1992 and were tap my, you know, little kid Jason and be like, you're going to be friends with the guy that made yeah. this book, uh, his head would literally explode. Yeah. Like it would just, you know, and right. like that's one of those, for that to me, that's like one of those moments where I'm like, oh yeah. Like every once in a while when I'm emailing Dan, like just being like, hey, what's up? You know, it's like, oh, I'm emailing this guy that was the top of the mountain for me. For yeah. most of my life, yeah, this guy, yeah, yeah. you know, and, you know, and the fact that he will reply is amazing. It's a little surreal. Yeah, it, very surreal. Yes. Um, I, that, that moment, I, I just wanted to finish before I forget. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I apologize. You interrupted and I, no, I'm kidding. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm, kidding, I'm, kidding, I'm kidding. going to unsign the book. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, I just wanted to hit, I, did, I didn't want myself to come across in this way. I just wanted to say... I, at the end, at that moment, I was like, when I said, like, there's people who work, work, and work, and mm -hmm. they'll never get to where I'm at, it made me so thankful for all the people mm -hmm. who I came across who've kind of helped me or mentored me along the way. And I felt very, like, blessed and just this gratitude. I just felt kind of like shining, like, I felt like it was shining in here. And I was just like, man, I'm going to, I'm going to not take it for granted ever. And I, and I don't think I ever have. And, I just want to keep doing the best possible work I can because yeah. I don't want to ever look back and go, man, you could have done better or you could you took it mm -hmm. for granted then because it's such a rare opportunity to, to do, I feel like my 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 job. Yeah, yeah. I um, think I think that's a great philosophy to take into any life, even if you're not working in the entertainment industry. I think we we as humans naturally take everything for granted. We take our family for granted. We take our jobs for granted. We take our house for granted. We take our car for granted. And it's funny because every one of those things, I mean, especially think about your car. Like I could drive out of here today and uh, immediately wreck my car. Mm. I was knocking on wood, everybody. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, and my car's gone. Right. And suddenly that car, but that car could mean a lot to me. Like that car could have been the car that I drove out here. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, it's not. Uh, <laughs> but um, it could have been, and that would mean a lot, or my house, or my family, or something like that. And and we always think these things are going to be there forever. We think they're going to be forever. But I think the lesson of life is that nothing is there forever. And so, yeah, it's always that idea of being present. Like the thing they say in meditation, like be present where yes. you are right now and like yes. realize like, oh, wow, I have this stuff right now. Like the fact that I'm getting to record a podcast episode with you right now. Mm. There's somebody out there that is listening to my voice 
that I have never met, and they might be like, oh, that sounds like a pretty cool dude. And that the opportunity that I have to connect with this random stranger is amazing. Yes. Ugh, you, you hit it on the nose, man. Yeah. Because that's one of the few things we do have control over, being present in the moment. Yeah. 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 It's true. Yeah. We're so deep. Yeah. That's the way we do, we, it here. do I get to talk about current events? We, we brought it up several well, times. I want to talk what? about Can let's, I talk about current events? Let's, uh, Michael, <laughs> let's bring him up. <laughs> Let's bring him up. <laughs> well, we have five minutes left until the next break. Oh, uh, let's let's actually go to break then, and then uh, we'll go current events when we come back. Sure. So, so we we don't we don't uh, interrupt the session. Uh, yeah, we'll be back. All right, and we're back. All right, we are back. Um, uh, Jason's been chomping at the bit for current events. Yeah, let's well, talk about first it. First off, uh, I wanted to show Jason uh, one of um, We Sam's favorite artists, D- Michael. <laughs> We were having a good time. <laughs> Fuck, man. I don't even want to. I fucking hate this guy. What is this? Dude, it's the worst human being on the planet. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Easy. Easy there. I don't know if he's that bad. I, I kind of think, you know, Vladimir Putin might be worse than that guy. Okay, fine. <laughs> Vladimir, that guy. Okay. <laughs> Dude, I, I'm so annoyed with him, Michael. He does these art things, these modern art. Where he just pops balloons? Yeah, with knives, art sometimes. Or he does stuff like this. You, you, by the way, I, I don't mean to tell you how to produce this podcast, but have you reached out to this guy to get him on the show? You should, because to see this battle yeah. would be amazing. He's top of the list. Oh, is he? He's, He's top show. of the list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it would be. I think it would be a bit difficult seeing as how. He All lives. you have to do is look at Wee Sam's face right now to know that that would be one of the best episodes of Wee Sam's world. It'd be the ever. shortest. <laughs> It would be it would be a long plane ride from uh, from Norway. Oh, he's in Norway. Ah, uh, you pay. gotta go to him. You I'll gotta pay. go to him, dude. Okay, what would be the hashtag? Hashtag what, what's this guy's name? Jan Hakan Eriksson. Oh, that's not good for a hashtag at all. <laughs> <laughs> he even ruins hashtags. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> like it needs to be like hashtag We Sam Balloon. Yes. <laughs> Like everyone on Twitter listening right now, hashtag We Sam Balloon. Yes, if you'd like to see We Sam interview, what's his name again? Uh, Jan. Jan. Yeah. I'd love to bring him yep. in here. Yeah. I think this needs to happen. Hashtag We Sam Balloon. Ju- yes. You know, if you go to his YouTube page or his Instagram page, it's just all this stuff and he calls it art and it's not. <laughs> See, I want to I want to hear him explain why it's art to you. And and what if he convinces you in less than sixty minutes? I'll choke him. I don't know. <laughs> uh, that's the only the thing. The first I can do. live murder on Adobe Radio. <laughs> <laughs> and on to current events. All right. All right. Thank you for sharing that. I loved it. I got so angry. I had to take off my headphones. I'm like, all right. All Since right. we were talking about it earlier, yes. but let's bring up the uh, the yeah. Spider Man out of the MCU. <laughs> what a thumbnail yeah. right there. I love a thumbnail. So, Spider-Man and or Disney and Sony are having a little tiff right now uh, because Disney wants uh, f- more of a 50-50 deal rather than what the current one is. I think is like 95-5, um, where Sony gets 95 and Disney gets 5%. They right. They want a more balanced deal. And yeah. uh, Sony said no. What, what, do, what do you think about that? I think Disney is a greedy billionaire company and i think they need to shut up that's uh i i i'm i it's a little it's a i'm i'm almost i'm pretty disneyed out right now i really am yeah uh, i am because if if the company was like giving us exciting movies and interesting things then i would be down for it but like what the last two movies they gave us were live action remakes that were almost word for word the movie that they gave us 20 years ago i mean where is the creativity in that i i don't see it um, from what I understand of the deal is that it was that Disney, the deal currently is, is that Spider-Man can appear in any Marvel movie and Sony gets no money from that. Yeah. But when Spider-Man is produced by Disney, but the movie is released by Sony, Disney gets like 5% of that. But Disney were like, Hey, if we're producing a movie, we want 50% of that. And to me, Disney's getting Spider-Man in their movies. By the way, Spider-Man has been in three Marvel movies. There have only been two Sony Spider-Man movies produced by the MCU. So, so far, Disney's winning because all three of those made a billion dollars, I think. Um, And Sony's like, you know, or Disney's like, we need more money with your character. 
do you know what Disney also gets? No. They all get the merchandise. merchandise. All the merchandise. That's huge. That's and her. That yeah. sometimes makes more money than the damn yeah. movies itself. Yeah. I actually think Sony needs to get more money out yeah. of this deal. I think Sony's totally in the right. And I know everybody's saying boycott Sony, but Absolutely I, not. I think I think Sony's 100%. They own the rights to the film rights of this they, they don't need to do yep. anything for yeah. Disney. Yep. And they're they're doing Disney a favor, really. Also, by the way, Sony made the best Spider-Man movie of all time last year. It's called Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Yep. yep. They don't need Disney. They don't. Uh, that's you know. Sorry, I, I, I got. That's no, all, don't be a sorry. Lot, a lot of this is vitriol because um, one of the things in my podcast is I get uh, people from Twitter coming and being like, "What do you think about this?" What do you? And all of them have been boycott Sony, and and they're they just want. Um, Spider-Man and the MCU so bad, this fictional character in, in the MCU so bad. But I look at Disney as like, oh, hey, they just laid off 100,000 Fox employees. Hmm. I'm and not really on their side. Some of them are even saying, like, going as far as to say, oh, Disney, buy Sony. I don't want that. No. No, not I at all. S- S- Disney already owns 25% of Hollywood. They don't need more. Yeah. What, what would you do in um, if you were in Disney's uh, position, in a, in a position where you can negotiate deals and everything like that? I'm just curious. Oh, interesting. Um, man, I don't know. I don't know. Because um, Disney will be the loser here. Like, losing Spider-Man out of the universe is going to hurt them. I disagree. I guess not, story-wise, uh, it's going to hurt oh, them. For sure. Yeah. Story-wise, it, it, it might do that. Yeah. Um, uh, financially, they're just so big that oh, I feel yeah. like mm-hmm. they're just like... Too mm-hmm. big to fail. You know, yeah. So. You know, um, I don't know though. I I, I don't know. I'll tell you what. If I was Sony, what I would do? Yeah. If I was Sony, I would make uh, whatever the third Spider-Man movie is because they said that Tom Holland signed for two more. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would go immediately put feelers out to Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield and say, "Hey, what would it cost to get you to come back as Spider-Man? Because we have the rights." And I would cast a character as the African American Spider-Man, Miles Morales, and I would make live action Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse right now is the biggest bird to Disney right now to, because that movie would blow everybody's mind. Ooh, okay. Like have the three live action Spider-Man meet on screen that it'll make them a billion dollars. Yeah. yeah. I'd go yeah. see that movie. Yeah. yeah. That, and it, it would be the biggest way for Sony to be like, we don't need you. We don't need you, Disney. You could have had a piece of this. You let it go. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't know. In terms of the Disney, th- I don't know if there is anything Disney can do Besides give them a piece of their Marvel movies, which I don't think they're going to do. They're not going to do that. I think what they're doing is that this is exactly the negotiating strategy is re- releasing the information that this is happening and that get all the fanboys to say, yeah. hey, we're, you're going to lose Spider-Man in the MCU. Go boycott Sony. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Although it, uh, it, I said it was problem story-wise. I don't know. It is a thing. Spider-Man, they kind of set up Spider-Man as the next Iron Man yeah. story-wise in yeah. this movie. And you... We're going into a phase of Marvel. It'll be interesting to see where we just lost all our big guns. We don't have Iron Man now. We don't have Captain America now. Thor is going to be in one more movie, but he's handing the mantle off to somebody else. So we're going into this phase. If you look at the next phase of Marvel, it is a bunch of movies of new Mm. characters and or side characters. It'll be interesting to see if I don't know if all these movies will make a billion dollars. Like so far, we're in this period now where a Marvel movie comes out, makes a billion dollars. You know, I don't know if we're going to see that over the next two years. It'll be interesting to see if we do. Do you think that maybe the Fox deal that uh, Sony or that Disney made is also the reason why they're doing all these reboots, kind of? Because they're it's they don't have to do much. I always heard. Um, I always heard that it was um, about. Sorry, I, go ahead. No, no, I'm sorry to interrupt you, man. Oh, I'm just saying if you want to pull up the mic to you, Peyton. Oh. For next time. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, yeah, Sorry, yeah. that just I was like, totally somebody comes to you? like, no, good. I was just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the worst way to tell them it's to do that. <laughs> um, I, I always heard that they were doing that for these live action remakes because they're trying to keep, it's their it's their subtle way of keeping, keeping the, the copyright mm. uh, fresh. That too, yeah. Uh, do you, uh, by the way, do you know that the copyright to Mickey Mouse should have elapsed 30 years ago? Yeah. Mickey Mouse should be in the public domain right now. And Disney through all their millions of dollars, keep doing these court battles to extend the copyright. Um, also, because of that, Superman should be in the public domain right now. Funny enough, I saw a thread, wow. yeah. I saw a thread that Spider-Man should actually be yeah. in the public domain. Yeah, Batman just this year entered, as well. Batman, I think, this year should have entered the public domain. Can you imagine that world? If Batman and Superman are in the public domain, Mickey Mouse is in the public domain? 
Yeah, It'd but be these, messy. yeah, it would be. <laughs> but also, we'd get some interesting stories. Like, That's I mean, uh, we'd get the story where you know Superman is a porn star or something like that, where you'd be like, oh, I don't know about this. We but already have that. We do. Let's pull it up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I always try to th- see it from as many different perspectives as possible, and being one of the execs, you know, in charge at let's say Disney, you know, they they're not going to be like. Well, let's not make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I, it's just I, under, not, I understand. That, it's yeah. like a, just on a purely free capitalism kind of mm-hmm. thing. You know, they're not going to go. Well, let's just give. Let's just give them that one. We'll keep. We have enough here. It's just it, no yeah. business exec ever says that. They'd be like, "No, get as much as you can. No, we're going to fight for that." You know what? I, and I'm like, I get it. I, I mean, the it's, only it's tough. Though. I mean, maybe the only solution now. It, it, because Disney released all this stuff is is maybe the idea is Disney gets that character in more movies. Mm. Like they're like, okay, we'll we'll keep the profit margin the same, but we want Spider Man in double the movies. So right now, I think they get Spider. Oh. They've had Spider Man three. I think the agreement was for Spider Man to be in two more plus the other two Spider movies they were gonna make for Sony, something like that. So if they were like, okay, we get Spider Man now in five of our movies, and you don't get to touch it, and we'll keep the profits the same. Um, but I don't know. I, I I honestly think releasing it publicly has now like I think it is certified that it will not happen now. I don't I don't think they'll I don't think they'll reach an agreement now. Just because I, I I'm kind of familiar with a lot of the ways these negotiations go. Mm-hmm. Some of my my entertainment lawyer kind of filled me in on how aggressive the yeah. lawyers sometimes talk to each other. This doesn't surprise me too much. Oh you know no, I mean? no, especially it's... with negotiating. You have and when you're negotiating for Disney. Or you're negotiating for Sony. You got hardcore lawyers yeah. who know the ins and outs of your business like like nobody else. So well, they're looking for loophole. Have you ever heard the story about Brian Cranston got Breaking Bad? Hmm. So it's, it's it's an amazing story. He so Vince Gilligan wrote the part of Walter White for Brian Cranston because they'd worked together in the X Files. He specifically wrote the part for Brian Cranston. Wow. And at that time, Brian Cranston was known as the dad, the goofy dad from Malcolm in the Middle. So when they he brought the show to AMC, they greenlit the season, the whole first season, and Vince was like, well, I want to give the part to Brian Cranston. AMC was like, no, we're not doing that. So they made him do auditions. Brian Cranston was in the auditions. Apparently, Brian Cranston did better than all the other actors, and AMC was like, we're not giving that part to the goofy dad from Malcolm in the Middle. We don't care. We don't think he can sell that show. (laughs) Brian Cranston um, released to the press, because he apparently had gotten another offer from some Fox sitcom. He released to the press, to the Hollywood Reporter, that this other Fox show was going to scoop him up and give him a part and do this other stuff like that. And uh, AMC signed him the next day. As soon as the article broke, yeah. so like this type of stuff again, yeah, it's it's well, the they dirty did a, negotiation. They did that with Deadpool too. Yeah, it, uh, and and also mm-hmm. um, the Henry Cavill leaving Superman articles that came out. Like to me, I have no doubt that was released by Henry Cavill's agent mm-hmm. to make Warner Brothers be like, "Whoa, hey, no, come back, Henry." Yeah. <laughs> so it's a business. It's it is a strategy. It, it, it's and, war, and uh, it's cutthroat, and yeah, I don't know. Um, you got to have a good team and who mm-hmm. knows how to play, and then you have to know what's at risk and what bridges you might be burning. But here's the thing: yeah. <laughs> these execs they jump they jump ship too, so yeah. don't be worried. Let's say if you've quote unquote burned a bridge with AMC or whatever, like you just got to wait five years. Yeah, yeah. And then those execs <laughs> yeah. aren't there anymore, and then you've got a new yeah. people in charge. So it's also a weird one because this is literally a billion dollar battle. It's a billion dollar battle over a fictional character. It really is. It's not even about an actor. It's about a fictional character. Well, imagine how it looks to the board of directors if whoever side wins. You know, they're like, oh, look at the CEO. He won against Disney or he won against Sony. Let's keep him on. Let's give him his bonus. Yeah. So there's there's some selfish interests involved as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean... Just like in any kind of business situation. uh, Fortunately, unfortunately, there's a balance. Yeah, internally in Disney, I mean, this might knock Kevin Feige down a few pegs. Like, they might be like, you lost Spider-Man. You lost a Spider-Man, you know. Yeah. Uh, what uh, What else uh, is on the current event plate? Well, I also wanted to, since we're still on Disney. It's a lot of Disney stuff. Uh, yeah. Streaming. Jeff Goldblum is having a TV show called The World According to Jeff Goldblum, mm-hmm. which should be delightful. Okay. <laughs> I hope it's filmed in his jazz club, but I'm kind of the same way. I'm like, all right. All right. <laughs> Good for Jeff. I'm glad he's getting the paycheck. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, all right. Cool. Well, yeah, he's a client. 
All right, great, yep. from work. <laughs> well, yep. that's good for him. Congrats, Jeff. We'll have I don't you know, on the show. Talk don't, about it. <laughs> I don't know if any of you have seen this movie, but Ready or Not was fantastic. Oh, yeah? I haven't seen it. It is amazing. It is. It wasn't my, my favorite movie of the year so far. I, I'm sure it is. It, I, I saw the trailer. It gave me anxiety, and I'm like, I don't, you know what? Do they fight vampires? Why does everybody have guns? What's the deal with this? What's uh, the, give me the one sentence pitch. So the idea behind the movie is that um, this woman's getting married to someone in this like billionaire family. They're like a family of game makers, and everyone that joins the family has to play a game the night of the wedding. And if they draw a certain card, which is the hide and seek card, the family has to look for that for that person and kill them in like a ritualistic like. So it's the most dangerous game. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, but it's that's so much fun. Okay, that is interesting, especially in our industry because. They just canceled that movie, The Hunt, yes. yeah. which was also the most dangerous game. <laughs> I think that's silly. Sorry. <laughs> I do too. I, I, it is really silly. Yeah. Uh, They're what, the same what, movie. <laughs> they are the same movie, except this is like the one person versus, yes, 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 versus yes. Uh-huh. the family, and it's kind of a contained thing. Oh, that's interesting. But it, huh. it, And it has a little bit of a supernatural element to okay. it. Okay. Just because like there's this curse and the But family. you said it was great. It was fantastic. All right, cool. So great. That annoys me. Whenever they cancel movies or they start blaming video games for violence. And I'm like, oh, what video games were were on during the Roman Empire? Huh? Yeah. Gladiator fights. <laughs> yeah, it's all gladiator fights. <laughs> Just annoys me, man. Anything else, Michael? The Amazon's on fire. Oh! As we talked about yeah. earlier. Yeah, so I really wish people cared about the Amazon as much as they did for the uh, church being on fire, the Notre Dame church oh yeah and they raised all that money mm-hmm. so quickly yeah actually i just saw that um the the millionaires and billionaires who pledge money they actually haven't really lived up to their pledges oh you mean so they're saying that they they would donate but they, they haven't. haven't most of the donations have come from like actual like poor people who have just given money to the wow to the rehabilitation effort <sighs> At this point, I think we're, we may be better off just grabbing a fire extinguisher and getting on a plane ourselves, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at this point, I think that'll do the most good. Yeah, it's terrible. It's it's, it's really interesting to, yeah. to me what, what people jump onto yeah. and want to push and, 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 and wanna, what they want to post about. And then other things just get no attention at well, all. Well, that, that's another reason why I've had a hard time giving a damn about the Spider-Man thing when the Amazon rainforest is no burning fire. right now. <laughs> like, I'm like, I don't care about a fictional character, guys. <laughs> I, I came across this article, and maybe because it's so normalized mm-hmm. in the Middle East for things like this to happen, unfortunately. 67 killed in a suicide bomber in an Afghani wedding. Yeah. 67. Mm-hmm. I heard about that. Yeah. That's an insane mm-hmm. amount of people to die all at once. At a wedding, and no, no news no, coverage. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, the, and I'm comparing it again to the Notre Dame fire. Yeah, look at that compared to that or the Amazon rainforest yeah. right now. Well, it's the same thing. I think um, I think most African Americans in our country would probably bring up the argument that there are so many shootings in inner uh, cities that you uh, never hear about. My bad. Oh, we're going to rock out to that. Okay. <laughs> yep. I was like, that's an interesting Dad. subject to rock Dad. out to. <laughs> Inner city shootings. <laughs> Commercial break. Commercial break. <laughs> yeah, quick, quick. Automatic video play. Please right. stand by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Um, yeah, I, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a rough world out there. Uh, but I don't know whether it was always a rough world. We just didn't know about it, and the internet has made us see it. You know? Probably. Whether, do we live in ignorance is bliss world for a long time? I don't know. Probably. The 90s know. felt like that. But as long as Spider-Man gets to meet Wolverine and Captain America, it's okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's all I care about. I got one last I like article. This, I like this character voice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who he is. But... I, I, I like to call him Ohio Man. He's the guy in Ohio that like just loves movies, but will never make one himself. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. You can love movies. And that's it. it. And that's, you know, if you're happy in your life, then I don't care what your job is, yeah. you know, but don't, don't tell people how to make movies unless you're, you know, want to make one, unless you want to like actually Fair. put the sweat and tears and, and, and stress into it. Yeah. You know? Yes. It's no easy but, feat. Yeah. One last article. Yeah. Uh, they have gone down to see the Titanic for the first time in 14 years and it is is starting to disintegrate. It's still rusty. Okay, got it. It is disintegrating even. Um, I think they said that the captain's tub or whatever is completely gone. Wow. 
So yeah, not slowly, the captain's tub. Slowly, slowly but surely, it is. It is disintegrating. You know, I just, I wish, I, maybe in my fantasy, I imagine some like hardcore Titanic fan. He's like <laughs> reading this article, and he's just like. Fuck! <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like, I'm never gonna see it! <laughs> right, right. He's like, it's like, why God? Um, it's James Cameron, actually. Oh my God, of course. <laughs> what? Oh, James the Titanic. Cameron is that fan. He's like, I have to see the Titanic before the evil robots show up, because they're coming soon. Judgment Day is around the corner. <laughs> I've got to see the Titanic. Hey, uh, this is, I'm not bad-mouthing uh, Mr. Cameron, because I want to continue to work in this industry. <laughs> Avatar 2, 3, 4, and 5, he said he's filming all at once or something like that? It's like 2 and 3, I think. Okay. I think it's 4. Two. Nobody wants these movies. I, I'm – Sorry. I, I do, that's – I wonder where they're going to go with it. That's all I'm going to say. I think they're going to get – They're going bluer. under the ocean. Apparently. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's under the ocean. Yeah. Yeah, it's Little Mermaid Avatar. It's four sequels. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Four sequels. Four. Nobody wants these movies, James. The first four? movie is Pocahontas, the second James. Little Mermaid. James, nobody wants these movies, James. Nobody. Watch <laughs> all the way to... Just retire. All the way you. to... Just retire. December 2025. <laughs> oh, dear God. <laughs> well, hasn't Avatar Land and Disney World already opened up? Like, that's open now? What? I think so. Yeah, there's an Avatar Land in Walt Disney World. It's, in it's World, in, in Florida. Yes, in okay, the okay. Orlando one. Yeah, yeah. And it's a theme park about Avatar. It's like you go to that planet. <laughs> you know... Paradiso, or whatever it's called. I... I was never the uh, papyrus. Yes. Papyrus, papyrus yes. land. Yeah, the papyrus SNL, land. Yes. The SNL yeah. skit was freaking <laughs> hilarious. Um, I think he should do more stuff like that, like comedy stuff like that. What's his name? Ryan Gosling. Just more ridiculous comedy. He things. was great in the Nice Guys. Yeah, oh, I didn't see I that. Love, I love that. You movie. should see it. Okay. Shane Black. It's awesome. Okay, so cool. good. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Um, Disneyland was kind of. Uh, I, I can't really go back unless I'm able to do do it this way again. So when I was on For the People. ABC company, ABC owned yeah. by Disney. They give us the tour, uh, the tour guide. The and did they, they walk you to the front of every? Line? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's like the look at you. Yeah, and so that was my first time going. I can imagine all the people in line be like, well, "Who are they? Who are they? I know exactly. Who, who are they? So I took Michael. You're like, we're the people. That was pretty. We're awesome. the people. Yeah, <laughs> this was like before you came here, uh, Peyton. Gotcha. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we we went without you, Peyton. <laughs> it was December, okay. um, and dude. I don't think I could do Disneyland regular yeah, yeah. again because those lines are long. Yeah, man. I felt I felt kind of good skipping them. I went uh, – my my younger sister worked for an ABC affiliate in Joplin, Missouri. And okay. So when she came out here about five or six years ago, we went. It's the only time I've ever been to Disneyland. And we got the fast passes automatically. We didn't get to go to the front of the line. And it didn't really save you any time. And I kind of just looked around Disneyland and said, Okay. This I got it. I got what I needed. Yeah. Don't ever need to go back. <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> oh, you think I'm gonna wait 45 minutes in a while? Yeah. Oh I, no 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 no. I'll go back for. No. I'm gonna go back and see Star Wars Land sometime, but I'm okay. in no rush to see it. Yeah. yeah. Same here. Yeah. Uh, we actually did. Uh, what is it? The Haunted thing at Universal last year. Is I think it's last year. Halloween Horror Halloween Nights. Halloween Horror yeah. Nights. Yeah. Yeah. Last year. And I was looking at the prices, and it's like, do you want the super fast pass or just the regular? And it was it was a little bit more expensive yeah. for the super fast. But I'm like, man, I hate lines. Dude, thank God we got that. It was awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, man. We skipped. Uh, we hours. saved hours. Hours, yep. hours. And the thing is, after you've gone through three mazes, mm -hmm. scary mazes, they're all the same. They are all the same. Yeah. I. Uh, you know, fun fact, that was um, my second job in L.A. Was, oh. I was security at Halloween Horror Nights. Oh, I listened gosh. to a lot of podcasts. I was the guy in the black sheet just making sure that no <laughs> no drunk people punched a monster. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's interesting. Once you work behind it, you – yeah, the, those mazes are ruined for me because I know exactly where all all the stuff's going to happen. I right. know exactly where they're going to be. Yeah. And I did it three years ago, and yeah, I wasn't scared by it at all. And I literally would kept stopping my wife and being like, there's a thing. There's going to be a thing right there. So just wait a second. He'll pop out. And then he did. And I was like, okay, now we can walk on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was one guy at the very last maze. I don't know if you remember this one, Michael. He was on an electric fence, and he was like acting like he was electrocuted. Jason. Did you touch his fence? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Y you being a performer, <laughs> All right. you understand yeah. the amount of energy it takes to yeah. constantly. And we was go he was going full 100% like I'm being electrocuted <laughs> all the time. I, I was like, hey, 
he might need help. <laughs> like he might really be yeah. electric. Like he might be having a seizure. We'd never know. Oh, and I'm like, <laughs> he for sure gave himself whiplash and a concussion. <laughs> this is how violently he was shaking. I'm like, this guy's doing it for hours. You know, but his abs probably looked great. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Because probably he's probably always clenching them. <laughs> <laughs> but like, imagine I'm doing this for just a little bit, and yep. I'm like, oh, that's tiring. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah. Crazy people, man. Yeah, um, people are crazy. Let's see. <laughs> How much time we got left? We got about five minutes. Great. We'll uh, we'll wrap this thing up. Anything else you want to talk about uh, before we head out, Mr. Jason? Oh, I don't know, uh, Mr. We Sam. Um, I want to say this though, while yeah, you're yeah. thinking about that. Uh, first of all, thank you for your service. Oh, you're welcome. And thanks for having me on the show. Of course, thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing this book with us, the mm-hmm. world, with our one listener, Matt Reeves. Matt Reeves? Yeah. The guy who's directing Batman? <laughs> yes. Is that the same Matt Reeves? He gets that a lot. Oh, all right. I thought that's Hello? who it was. <laughs> no, we have a very loyal fan. Oh, okay. And so today I, was, I acted like I'm just doing the show for them. Oh, yeah, Matt so, Reeves. Yeah, Matt Reeves. Cool. Special shout out. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Our own, only fan of Geek Hitch Lesson is Hank. Oh. Yeah, it's only Hank. It's Hank. Yeah. Okay. Well, he's probably <laughs> listening to this. Then. Oh, he probably is. Hello, Hank. Hank! Yep. Matt. <laughs> <laughs> the weirdest yep. podcast. Goodbye ever. to everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> um, and people can find this on Amazon everywhere. Yeah, you get it's books. on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. It's Target. Kindle? Uh, yeah, it's on Kindle. Yeah, yeah. You Both. do audiobook for this? No, I didn't because they wanted to. Uh, my publisher, or uh, my publisher, this is the. I love my publisher, but that's yeah. the one thing. Uh, I wanted to record the audiobook because it's so personal and yeah. it's written in first person. They wanted the audiobook to come out the same day that the physical book did and my schedule wouldn't allow me to record the ah, book so it just bummer. didn't work out but uh weirdly the audiobook is selling really well yeah so i guess people don't like my voice it's all right <laughs> so they just no. don't know it. but no it's available everywhere it's uh yeah everywhere, everywhere you can buy books you can awesome get it. yeah and then geek history lesson yep geek history Weekly. lessons on itunes everywhere you can listen to podcasts youtube as well or no uh, yeah, I mean, we don't do it live. We don't we don't record video for Geek Hitch Lesson. Okay, that's that's so, what I was. Uh, yeah, 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 okay. It's so an no audio video, just an audio yeah. mm-hmm. only. Okay, yeah. that's cool. Um, yeah, man, uh, so good to catch up with you, and uh, let's yeah, make this happen more often. You're sure. actually one of our favorite guests, in my opinion. Uh, oh, very easy lie. to talk to you. Yeah, remember hashtag We Sam Balloon. Yes. <laughs> I want to come I, back for that episode. Uh, you know what? If we do it, you're more than welcome. I want to, to come, come back <laughs> because we might need security. Yeah. <laughs> Michael, play us out. <laughs> Thank you, Adobe Radio, for everything that you do here. Thank you, Nice Guy Digital, our new Patreon supporters. We appreciate you so much. Seriously, uh, thank you for giving a little extra. We love giving you a lot extra in return. Remember, if you have an Alexa, all you got to do is say, "Hey, Adobe," or "Hey, Alexa, play Adobe Radio," and then boom, you got Adobe Radio. Thank you to Guaya Key for keeping us hydrated and refreshed and caffeinated during the show. Thank you for everything you're doing for the Amazon rainforest. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Peyton. Thank you again, Jason. Thank you, Sam. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Jason Inman at everything. Um, at Jawin. J-A-W-I-I-N. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, thank you to Steph Jula. Thank you, God. Thank you to all of our service uh, people who are um, – our military people who are serving in the U.S. Army and the U.S. military, excuse me. Uh, we appreciate your service and appreciate your sacrifice. To all of our veterans, thank you. Always remember to listen, think, and then talk. <laughs>